This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome. This is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is 9-2-22, and this is show number 421. What a day it has been, Nick. I have to tell you, Kerry, normally before a holiday, you could probably trade the first two hours and go to sleep. Today was a roller coaster ride if we've ever seen one. Uh, it was just wild action out here. As you know, we had the job report this morning at 8.30 a.m. That report came in a little, just a tad bit weaker than expected, but it was already a, a pretty weak um, expectation. So um, basically the market uh, cheered over that. Uh, you had some news uh, basically that the unemployment rate climbed uh, to 3.7%. Uh, the market got excited over that, thinking that the, the Fed will pivot. Um, <clears throat> that number was slightly higher than expected by about two tenths. And uh, I think, you know, as ridiculous as that is, um, everybody's anticipating that the Fed may may pivot or do something. They're, they're behind the, uh, the curve here. Everybody knows it that's in this business. Uh, they have to catch up to where the two-year U.S. Treasury note yield is. And until they can do that or surpass it, um, they are way, way behind the curve. And they're supposed to uh, also do a quantitative tightening this month. So that has started where they're going to sell $95 billion worth of U.S. Treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. So the liquidity is basically coming out of the system. So yesterday we had a really good um, counter-trend bounce. Markets rallied up a little bit, which is normal. Today they're back down to yesterday's lows by the close. But it was really a roller coaster ride when you look at it. And um, I'm glad we're doing today's show at the end of the day because the Dow today traded as high as 32,000 and it finished at 31,300. So it just goes to show you the, the kind of uh, price action that took place. Yeah, and it was broad-based and, uh, and then the pullback was broad-based. Yeah, it was a broad-based move this morning, but I have to say, energy stocks held up well today into uh, the close, and surprisingly enough, what held up really well was precious metals. They really stood out today, had a very good day. They were up a bit more earlier um, when the market was rallying, but they held firm, didn't give back a lot of the gains, and that's a little change in character from what we've been seeing uh, recently. Yeah, well, I think, uh, you know, there's a thing, uh, my friend uh, Craig Hemke who's a really top-notch precious metals analyst, calls the physical floor. And at some point, uh, they knock down gold and silver to the point where the actual physical price, uh, it goes below it. And then you see the bounce back. Yeah, and I think that's probably where we are. I had a buy signal on silver two days ago. I picked it up myself. I own a boatload of it. I own call options in silver. I actually bought physical metal as well. Uh, I bought uh, one ounce coins. I bought some bars. And um, I, I have a big major buy signal for silver right now. So uh, silver acted well today. That was up a little over 1%. Uh, gold acted very well. Gold miners acted well. The junior gold miners acted well. And even, even platinum today was up 1.5%. Yeah, I, I, honestly, uh, I've already been uh, celebrating the holiday weekend and I've not been uh, following the markets like I ordinarily do. So I've, I'm kind of like uh, listening to this and uh, with a little surprise because uh, last time I looked this morning, everything was different. But 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 precious metals were up. So and I find it interesting, the energy sector sticking in there when, uh, you know, uh, everything else is falling to pieces. Well, you got to, you know, the, the news today that broke probably around 12 o'clock when the markets were putting in a sideways base was basically um, that Vladimir Putin, you know, was going to um, not be able to pump gas due to maintenance again on the Nord Stream pipeline into Europe. And then um, later it was uh, discussed that you know, he's, he will retaliate if the G7 puts price caps on Russian oil. And, um, you know, that's all we need to see. You know, you just got more geopolitical events 
that are taking place. This isn't going to end. This has been going on for a while. The markets are fragile right now, too. And, um, you know, this is just, a, uh, I think, you know, just a calm before the storm. And today was kind of a, you know, a pretty stormy day. Yeah, it certainly, certainly was that. And, you know, we're seeing this trend. This is the third or fourth time we've seen it. Big holiday weekends, big moves. And that shows some kind of change in the market sentiment that uh, many, many of your colleagues out there, Nick, are not really catching on to. Yeah, you know, normally I would uh, I would be out of my desk and I had to be pinned, you know, basically to uh, I, t I did ran a couple errands today and I'm pinned to the to the tel the, the, the cell phone, you know, watching this action. You really cannot um, go away as it's an unwritten rule that this is the last major holiday before real trading begins. Right. As you go into Labor Day, where a lot of traders take time off. But um, as you said, these holidays have been pretty wild, and uh, today really was no, uh, no different. I mean, it's it's been a wild one, and even there was more news out. I I believe the White House um, is asking for another twelve billion dollars for Ukraine. I mean, you know, uh, twenty four twenty twenty two billion for uh, COVID, and another four or five billion for monkeypox. I mean, these guys talk about the uh, Inflation Reduction Act. This is the in Inflation Production Act. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Well, you know, Milton Friedman once said, uh, if you want to know what a law actually does, you uh, look, you just turn its name the opposite, right? And uh, I, I, that's what I, we're I doing here. I love that guy because... He always had the best line. He, his best line ever was, if you put the government in charge of the Sahara Desert in five <laughs> years, they have run out of sand. Oh, God, it's so true. You know, like uh, he was uh, one of my favorites. Uh, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's brilliant he's, he's, guy. He was an ace, yeah. without a doubt. Yep, brilliant, brilliant man. And, uh, yeah, he, uh, he nailed it, I think, because uh, this inflation reduction is just going to, be, it really should be called the Inflation Production Act, right? Yeah, that's what I just said. That's right. That's the name I gave it. Um, you know, again, you know, the, these guys use a lot of transformational vocabulary and everything they tell us. But uh, like you said, if you just read b between the lines there, um, this this is just absolute craziness. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, I think they call this a neuro linguistic programming or something like that right yes nlp so, that's right NLP, <laughs> and this, this is what the focus grouping and all that stuff is about uh it's basically conning you coming up with terms to make you uh think to to basically gaslight you you know that's, that's what it's that's really, really what it is really yeah. about it's gaslighting and you know they carefully parse their words but you know that uh that in the end, uh, you know what they're about and you know what this is yeah, about. Without a doubt, Kerry. And, and, you know, the one thing I always tell everybody is don't worry about any of that stuff. Watch the reaction in the market. Price action is king. It'll tell you everything you need to know. Today, like I said, you had a huge rally um, in the, into 12 o'clock, and that rally was completely evaporated by the closing bell. So that just tells you everything you need to know, really. Yep, that's it. All right. Well, that's it for the show. Make sure you go over to Nick's site in the money stocks.com. See how he's been beating the averages for decades. The Twitter feeds at ITMS at Nick Santiago 01 at Kerry Lutz. Send your emails to KL at Kerry Nick, have a great weekend. We'll talk to you on Wednesday. Have a great weekend, Kerry.